Ron Horvath runs a 5,000-acre mixed farm near La Ross, Saskatchewan, together with his parents. You may think he's off to feed some cattle, but he's actually out to get a round bale for their furnace. About 12 years ago, they built a portable round bale furnace, which now provides heat for two houses and for drying grain. Previously, his house had electric heat. And it was becoming more and more expensive to heat with electricity. And uh, my dad and mom's house, uh, it was heated with oil. It's an older house, so it's not quite as energy efficient as, uh, as some of the newer ones. So the cost of heating the homes was something we, we looked at uh, just to try and reduce that, uh, that cost for us. The trailer carrying the furnace has a frame made out of used parts from an old semi-tractor. Since it's on a fifth wheel, Horvath says the trailer has good maneuverability. Uh, the back is actually axle out of an old trailer, an old semi-trailer, so it's just a solid axle and we've just pulled the axles out of the front end so that uh, it doesn't have to drive the differential because you don't need that. So yeah, basically it's just set up on, on a, an I-beam I frame. Uh, it's fairly heavy because the unit itself uh, holds 2,000 gallons of water and, and along with the structural steel in it, uh, there's a lot of weight there. So we, we run with dual wheels in the back and, and dual uh, wheels on the front as well to handle that kind of weight. The main chamber is a little over 10 feet deep and about 9 feet high, so it easily holds a full-sized round bale. The bale burner portion of the furnace was built for them in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and it was the only part of the project not done here on the Horvath farm. We brought it home and then we constructed the, the fan on it and put all the plumbing into it and the pumps and then we did uh, all the insulating and the outside sheeting and building the back door. So that was all done by ourselves after, after we got it home. The furnace is sheeted with tin and insulated with R20 fiberglass insulation. The outside door has a simple but effective over-center latch. So it's quick to undo, you just over-center the handle on it and lift it off a peg and you can swing it out and then I've made a, a catch for it to hold the door because on windy days if you're by yourself loading it you don't want the wind swinging that door closed on you when you're trying to put the bale in so I had to make a, a sliding system that uh, will hold the door out there and won't let, it, uh, won't let the wind push it in. The furnace has a second door which is open for bringing in round bales, but that door is actually a double door. And it's got a, a built-in inspection door in the middle of it, which uh, the manufacturer thought was important, so that you can uh, open the small inspection door, check to see if the bale hasn't slumped against the back. If it has, you can push it away, because you don't want to open the door and have the bale fall out on you. So the door itself is about six inches thick and, and basically filled with water. The water that returns from the furnaces in the house, uh, from the plantums in the house, basically flows back into the door. So it flows into the door first to keep the door cold. It's important that the door has, has got circulation through it at all times because it would overheat and warp it if it didn't, because it would get too hot. The furnace is connected to two houses by underground pipes, which carry the water from what Horvath calls the heart of the system. This is the main header that the hot water comes from the furnace. It draws it off the bottom of the furnace on this unit, flows into this header, and then we've got two pumps, one here and one here. This one pumps to the house on my left, and this one pumps to the house on my right. So they're individual pumps pumping each way, and they're continual. They pump all the time, so the water is flowing to the houses and then back into the furnace, comes back into this other plantum, and that flows to the back door, goes into the back door, flows out of the back door, and then dumps into the furnace. So here we've got uh, the control unit. There's, there's two uh, different settings on here. This, this one here is, uh, is set to control the damper. So you can control it uh, as to when you want the damper to open. If you turn it up, it'll open a little quicker and turn it down, it'll open. I usually set it at about 165 degrees. So when it gets up to 165, the damper will close. It'll remain closed until the furnace drops down to about 150. Then it'll kick back open again to bring the temperature back up. The second control is for the fan, which gives them the option of moving more air through the furnace to produce a faster burn. When we're heating the houses, we don't very often have to run the fan, but when we were drying grain, we needed more heat out of it, then the fan would run fairly often to uh, push air into the unit so that it, it combusts a little quicker and brings your temperature back up faster so you get a more rapid uh, heat out of it. For drying grain, they add a pair of large radiators which are utilized as heat exchangers. 
The water flows through them and then we just basically attach them to the uh, to the drying system on the bin. It's just, uh, just, a, uh, just a big fan that uh, picks up outside air and then blows it into your bin. So we, we set the rad up in between and run a, a flexible hose that attaches from the radiator uh, to the, the bin fan so it draws the air uh, through the rad as it's coming into the bin and picks up the temperature of the water that's flowing through your radiator. So it was just a couple of units that we bought and, uh, and we, we have them there on wheels and so they're easy to, to move around. And uh, we did uh, buy a little bit bigger pump because we needed a little bit more circulation. So we use a little bigger pump when we're, when we're drying grain. We don't use the pumps that are on the furnace because we want a little more water flow through it. Horvath prefers to burn flax straw bales since they seem to provide the most heat. He told us the system brings the air temperature up to about 100 degrees as it enters the grain bin. Well, the first time we set it up, uh, uh, we we'd combined some grain. They were talking about a rain coming, so we went and, and combined some grain. It was still pretty tough. Put it in the bin and we started up our, uh, our dryers and the next day it started to rain, but we'd already set up, so we kept drying right through the rain and it actually dried right in rain, which is hard to believe, but it will drop the humidity of the, of the air enough that you can still dry. I mean, it's not as efficient, but it works. And it'll dry um, 5,000 bushel bin in about five, six days, it'll dry it down. It won't be dried evenly through the bin, but uh, the bottom will be over dried, the top will still be under dried, but you can mix it and blend it away. Horvath says the system burns from one to three bales per day to heat about 2,400 square feet in the two houses, depending on the severity of the weather. He figures they are saving about $5,000 per year in heating costs, and they still have the original heating system in the houses for backup. He estimates the total cost of building the portable furnace at about $15,000 and figures it's been well worth the investment. The one thing he would like to have done differently is to use stainless steel, which would practically eliminate the chance of finding leaks in the furnace even after many years of use.